Hi, everybody. Thank you to those who joined the last Stronger Together Get Together. And um, here is the video, as promised, of uh, the presentation, which I have re-recorded for you because we had so many breakout sessions that actually uh, just taking the recording for the meeting was a little bit too disjointed. So I hope you find it useful. I hope those of you who joined us will um, glean more um, help from it. And I hope those who weren't able to join us find lots of useful help in it too. It's all about three areas to focus on to grow your business. And I hope that you will join us at the next meeting, uh, which is on the 10th of November. Uh, but until then, I hope you enjoy the recording of the presentation. Hi, I'm Julia Blake. Welcome to this video. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to share three areas to focus on if you want to grow your business. And I've been working with business, business owners for over 11 years now, and I've really seen that Focusing on these three areas has a massive impact in how those businesses grow. Okay, and first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. As you already know, I'm Julia Blake, but I help busy and ambitious business owners grow their business, increase their profit by having the right processes and systems in place to help them be more organized and to increase revenue and decrease costs. And why do I do that? Well, I love working with business owners. Uh, business owners have a real sense of purpose and more often than not want to have a positive impact in, on the world around them, with helping people that they work with. And I want to help business owners make more of what they have so that they can help more people and make more of a in, positive impact. And I want to help those business owners reduce the stress of the typical feast and famine that we feel as business owners, because when you're out to, um, delivering, then it's really hard to be developing your business as well. So it really is a sense of feast and famine. And we want to try and smooth that out, um, because when we are in a calmer headspace, then we are able to run our businesses better. We are able to be more creative, more productive. Basically, I want to help business owners do more of what they want to do and less of what they have to do. And actually thinking about what you do is really, really key to all of this. Have a really good thing about that. What do you do and why do you do what you do? And it's helpful to put it into a very simple sentence. It helps when you're out meeting people. It helps when you are writing content or um, sharing what you do on email or going out on social media. So filling out of this very simple sentence template will really help you. So literally put yourself in the position, I help dot, 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 to dot, 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 by dot, dot, dot. So mine is I help busy and ambitious business owners to grow their businesses by having better processes and systems in place. Okay, so, the aim of today, as I've already said, is to find ways to grow our businesses by looking at three areas which, when they are focused on, have grown businesses. Okay, that's not rocket science. I am a simple beast. Life is complicated enough already. But it's one of my core values is to review, to learn and to improve because it makes such a difference. It's also really important to make the most of the things which work for us, to free ourselves up to do more of what we want to do. And as I've already said, I love working with business owners because there's a passion that they have and there's an agility that they have as well. And fundamentally, one of my core values is to help others. It's also really important to keep remembering that we can only control how we react to others. We cannot control what goes on around us. It's really nice to know that we are in the driving seat of our own business. So which, what's the first area that I'm going to talk about? It is data. 
Okay, and that might not sound like the most exciting thing, but bear with me. Think of data, all these different, I think of data as people, okay, as contacts. Look at the, look at how they all interact with each other. You can have single um, bits of data, you can have single people on their own, or they can be in some type of joint partnership, or they can be in a group, or they can be connecting with other people. All sorts of ways that we as humans interact with others. There's all sorts of ways that our clients interact with us. There's all sorts of ways that our network interacts around us. There's all sorts of ways that we connect with people that we want to work with that want to work with us. There are many different components to data, of course, and each of them has a different importance for each of us, depending on our business. But it is an underutilized gold mine that is at your fingertips. So even if you don't want to fully embrace data, and I would urge you to, and at the very least, let it be your friend. Understand it, break it down. Think about what do you need to capture so that you can offer a great service, that you can actually work with the right people. What does the data mean to you? How will it help your business? Think about grouping your contacts. Think about your clients. Think about your potential clients. Think about your previous clients. Think about your not now clients. Think about your product staircase. Can you encourage those clients along a product staircase so they buy more from you, that you help them more so that the lifetime value of that client is realized? Think about the different groups of people that you work, that you are in contact with because it helps you stay in touch with them. It helps you send targeted communication to a segment of your data. Understanding your data helps you analyze it. For example, how many conversations do you need to have at the very top of your pipeline to get X people into your pipeline so that you can encourage those people to get to the next milestone and eventually to actually convert into becoming a client. So if you know that you have to have 20 conversations if, before you can get three meetings in the diary and you need to have one meeting in the diary to get one new client, then you know that you need to be aiming for 20 conversations on a rolling basis. It's that type of thing. Bring that data to life, let it be your friend. Data really comes into its own though when you know, when you really know, and I'm talking really, really know who your ideal client is. And I talk about this a lot, that's because it's so important. If you don't understand who your ideal client is, then how can you understand their pain? How can you offer a solution to solve that pain if you don't know what that pain is? And have an ideal client avatar. So it's one thing understanding who your ideal client is, then have an ideal client avatar. This is um, basically a persona, an imaginary um, being that is very real to you. Okay, and you name them and you talk to them. And when you create content, you have them in your in the forefront of your mind. Because when you do that, then you cut through all the noise that's out there. There are five main benefits that I talk about in my ebook, which is free to download, and I'll put the link in the comments to this video. But the first main benefit of understanding who your ideal client is and having an ideal client avatar is that you are able to identify their pains, but not only their pains, their needs and their challenges. And this enables you to empathize with them and to offer a solution to those pains, needs or challenges. And that's your product or your service. The second main benefit is that understand, of understanding who your ideal client is and having an avatar is that you will then understand how to successfully communicate with them. And that will help you avoid the scattergun approach, which increases the probability that your avatar will hear you and see you amid all the other messages that they are bombarded with daily. And that is going to reduce the cost of sales. Okay. Understanding who your ideal client is and having an ideal client avatar is going to help, well, it's going to create time saving, help you create time saving processes and systems which support your business model. And that's going to enable you to increase your net profit by reducing your costs and increasing your revenue. 
The fourth main benefit is that you will be able to successfully create and implement a contact relationship management system, a CRM, which will underpin and grow your business by giving you more time and it will enable you to be more organized and productive with that time that you've gained. The fifth main benefit is that of understanding who your ideal customer is, your ideal client, is that it's really key to giving them good, good service, good delivery. That, in turn, results in strong customer relationships. You'll be able to realize the lifetime value. Um, and new sales will come to, come to you through a positive word of mouth recommendations from your existing clients. So hopefully just looking at those five main benefits, you'll see how important it is to know and understand who your ideal client is and have an ideal client avatar. So I have created an ebook. It is free to download and it gives you a step-by-step guide to creating your own. So do pop over and grab that PDF and um, have a look at it. It's full of useful um, way, you know, tips and um, hints and tips as to why it's good to know who your ideal client is and why your business needs to have an avatar, how they can be used, how they're created, and it helps you create your own. So if we're focusing on data and we are understanding who our ideal client is, then we can look at it very simplistically. We can take a, a snippet, if you like, which will help us. We can do it really, really quickly. It doesn't have to be really complicated. So you can actually say, my ideal client is a dot, 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 who wants dot, dot, dot. And their biggest problem right now is, and the thing that keeps them awake at night is, and they mostly hang out on. Because when you do that, you know where you need to be focusing your time to reach them. So, jot down, pause this video, just jot down who your ideal client is, what their biggest desire is, what their biggest problem is right now, and then what keeps them awake at night, which that, that moment where you lie there and you just go ping, and then you're just awake, it's just so annoying, but what, what is that for your ideal client? And where do they hang out? And then use what you've jotted down and pop it into this template and it really really will help you and then after you've done all that name them okay i know it sounds strange but name them because it makes it easier to think of them when you are um creating processes uh when you are looking at your data and making sense of your data and when you are doing your marketing and when you're doing your sales so i hope you've seen that the first area that uh, we've looked at of data really is a gold mine. And when you think of your data in the context of knowing who your ideal client is, it's liberating. Data is a great thing. It's liberating to look at data um, in the context of knowing who your ideal client is. And when you do that, you increase revenue because you are attracting more of your ideal client to you and you are saving time. So you are decreasing costs as well. So what's the second area to focus on? Well, it's your processes and your systems. And some people might be yawning at this point. No, don't yawn, and I'll show you why. Getting a handle on your processes and your system is liberating. And I love this image, going from this chain into just flying free as a bird. It is liberating to understand um, your processes and your systems. Let's have a look at what it means when you don't have a process. Not having a process means you are reinventing the wheel every single time you're doing something. It's exhausting. It's inconsistent. It's time consuming. It's inefficient. It's expensive. And it means that there's an increased likelihood that you, can, that you may drop that ball or one of your spinning plates. Okay. Having a good process is what we're after. And it's actually really quite simple to do. Think about what has worked and what hasn't worked in the past. Be objective. Remove the, the emotion of the actual situation. Be objective. What's worked in the past and what didn't work? And jot that down. 
Okay, because a good process allows you to achieve more. It gives you time and it enables you to make more of that time because it reduces the stress. And that gives you more time to calmly think about what is going on in your business, what you need to do. It makes it possible for you to be creative because we can't be creative from that negative stress state. It enables you to be productive. Reducing the stress by having a good process enables you to be more productive. And most of all, it helps you to enjoy running your business more. Okay. And as we've already touched on, in the first area, the ideal client concept, everything within your business is aligned if you know your ideal client and how they want to be interacted with. It makes everything simpler. So at the very least, think about these four processes. Your sales process, how do you take a lead all the way through to converting and becoming a client? The onboarding process, what do you do to onboard your client in an efficient, fantastic way that they will remember and that will set up a good working relationship? Think about the delivery process. How do you deliver what you do to your client? And think about the post-delivery process. How do you bring it all to a lovely close? And of course, one of those last things there is to ask for a recommendation or a testimonial. And if the client's had a great experience with you, they're going to be more than happy to do that. And then, of course, we need to think about the systems that will support these processes. It's really important to say here, do not let the tail wag the dog. The dog has to be wagging the tail. So there are many systems out there. Um, and just be aware um, that the, tail, the dog needs to wag the tail. Okay. So just thinking about the systems, let's just think about why that's so important. Because having a good system will support your process. And it should be like having a clone of your very best self at your side. When it, that is the case, then it reduces overwhelm, reduces stress, saves time doing things, fixing things. Having a good system supporting the process will enhance your productivity by creating more time and enabling you to make more of that time. Good system supporting the process gives, makes, makes space, makes space to reflect, learn and grow. And it gives us the opportunity to transition to the next stage of our business's growth. All of those together mean that having a good system to support a great process will reduce the cost of sale and the cost of delivery. And therefore, you will see an increase in net profit. If your revenue stays the same, if you're reducing those costs, then you're going to see an increase in net profit. So hopefully I've shown you that processes and systems are a good thing. Let's just, you know, we have to understand that there is an initial investment of time and energy, but it's worth it because the rewards are great. They provide clarity within your business. Good processes and systems will move contacts through their journey with you in an efficient, pleasant way for both you and your clients. You can only so, hold so much in your head at any one time. And actually, um, there's been lots of research on that. Number is seven. You can hold seven things in your head at any one time. So don't beat yourself up about the fact that you can't retain everything in your head. Let these wonderful processes and systems out there, or let the wonderful systems out there that support your processes, take the heavy lifting off you. Basically, a good system will remind and prompt you when you most need it. And a good CRM is a great place to start because it's a clone of your best self. But it means a bad day isn't, it won't be an unproductive day. There are many out there. So do get recommendations from people who um, you respect, whose, whose opinion you value. And talk to me. One of the things I really spend um, a great deal of time doing is the designing and building CRMs for my clients. And you can probably tell that I do absolutely love them. And my CRM of choice is Capsule, so do talk to me about that. But hopefully you've seen that before, if, if you don't need to spend hours and hours and hours on this, 
take a step back, go outside, get into nature, get a clean sheet of paper, and just think about these four processes. And then other processes can be thought about afterwards to support these. But the main four processes to think about in your, in your business are the sales process, the onboarding process, the delivery process, and the post-delivery process. So if you are considering a CRM or you have one that isn't really supporting you in the way that I've described, then talk to me. And as I've said, my tool of choice is Capsule. It's absolutely brilliant. You can manage your pipeline and what you deliver to your clients. It integrates with account-based accounting um, software, such as Xero QuickBooks, and it also integrates um, with the likes of MailChimp. And when you've got um, something like Office 365, Microsoft 365 or Google, with Capsule, with MailChimp, and with something like Xero, then you've got all the systems in place that you need to really have great foundations in place to um, run a successful business. So let's just have a look. Let's just dip in and have a look at what a pre-sales or a sales um, process might look like. It can be really, really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. The initial inquiry, you qualify and you confirm any specific requirements. And don't forget, at that point, you can maybe qualify people out if it's not a good fit. Then think about the proposal. Make sure you follow up. Make sure that that potential client feels that you want to work with them. Okay, The number of people that don't follow up is awful. It's just such an obvious thing to do. And actually, sometimes people just want a nudge. Sometimes people um, actually will actually appreciate you following up. Don't think you're hassling people, but think about how your ideal client wants to be um, interacted with. You know, the, your ideal client may um, want to have a couple of follow-ups because maybe the sales process is a little bit longer. You may need to edit that proposal. Do be prepared to do that. Um, but a lot of the conversation regarding the proposal would have been covered off the initial inquiry, for example. But you may need to edit that proposal. When you get that verbal agreement, do you send T's and C's? And when you raise an invoice before um, the outset of any work, it changes the energy that that client brings to working with you. So I really strongly advise getting T's and C's in place and raising that invoice because the energy is much more positive that that client brings to that relationship. And then, of course, schedule the work. Have it all nicely laid out. So, you know, what um, time you need to set aside. And then at that point, the opportunity has been won. Move it from the pipeline to delivery. Or if you have lost that sale, identify why it's lost. See if there's a trend about the reason that you're losing um, um, leads if your potential clients aren't turning into clients. There may be a misalignment with your marketing. You may be attracting slightly the wrong people to you, for example. So it is always good to remove the emotion and have a look at the reason this sales potentially have been lost. And then just a very basic client journey would be to deliver and you're scheduling and delivering and scheduling and delivering, however many times that takes. But do follow up. So this is the delivery and the post delivery all in one, follow up, check in, enhance what you've delivered, ask them for testimonials. Think about opportunities to upsell or cross sell. It's much easier to um, realize the lifetime value of a client or to get a new client in. So think about your product staircase. And then when you've got to the um, natural conclusion of the relationship, do add them to your regular communication strategy because they may know about the people who need what you offer. So stay front and centre. If you want to talk to me about any GDPR questions, then please do. I do cover all of that as well. So, as I said, a CRM is a great system to support so much of what we've discussed and, and talked about already. Um, many people don't understand that a CRM is actually going to prompt you to do things at the right time. It does. Capture is brilliant at that. So do talk to me if that's something that you're interested in. So what's the third area? We've already looked at data. We've looked at processes and systems. And the third area, arguably the most important one, is you. We need to look after ourselves when we're running a business because if we're not there doing it, then quite likely that there aren't going to be a, many other people that can step into our shoes to help us. And more often than not, it means that the business um, actually comes to a standstill if we are unable to work. Okay? It's not just about being there. It's about quality of life, if you like. 
it's really important to realize that success doesn't breed happiness. Happiness breeds success. And I love a TED talk. And I'm particularly interested in this TED talk. It explains that positive people are 31% more productive and 37% better at sales. And here's the link to the TED talk if you want to check it out. It's really important to love what we do. It shines through everything that we offer the world around us, our clients, our suppliers, people we work with. And if you're not sure that you are, then do pop over and read my blog about love what you do, do what you love. Here's why and how to find out what that is. So it's really important to think, what do you do to look after you? Okay. Is it meditation? Is it swimming? Is it um, getting out in nature? Getting fresh air? Music? Really drill down into what it is that makes you feel better, what it settles you, what calms you, what helps you. And my advice would be to schedule that in. So you're doing it before you need to do it. I think prevention is always better than, than cure. And um, take stock. Looking after yourself and you is definitely one of the main areas to focus on within your business. Okay, so I hope you have found that useful. The three main areas that when focused on are proven to help you grow your business are data with the, in the context of understanding who your ideal client is, your processes and your systems, because they are liberating and you get a, a proper handle on those, and you, focus on you because it will resonate through the rest of your business. So I hope you have found the video useful. Please let's connect. If you have any questions, please message me. If you'd like to talk about anything that's in this video, then um, I'm more than happy to talk it through. And you're always happy to connect and have a chat and try and help you uh, as business owner where I can. So um, I hope you found it useful. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.